What's up, guys? Sim Football Critic here. Y'all know who it is, and look who I have. Anthony White. We call him A-Dub. I'm going to let him introduce himself as far as what he does, because I don't want to mess up his title. But then we're going to jump right into the interview. So tell the people exactly who you are and what it is you do. Uh, Anthony White. I'm gameplay designer on the Madden NFL 17 franchise. So basically, you know, um, a lot of things traditionally I've been known for, like the defensive offensive playbooks, special teams as well, but um, now, you know, expanded out a little bit more into some other areas, including coverage and all other facets of the game. And there you have it, the guy that we've been waiting for in regards to defensive zone play. What we're going to do, we're going to do this interview a little differently because me and him agree it's too much to try to cover in an interview. I mean, he could probably make your head spin with the knowledge he has. So what we're going to do is just read some of these community questions that you guys sent to me to the hashtag. So let's get started. The first one, they want to know how many variations of cover four are there in the game? Well, this year for cover four, uh, we decided to make it a zone it call, which basically means that we're essentially turning into a big zone. And the reason we did that was to address many of the concerns that the community had last year with the cover four when it came to the post curl concept. You know, the inside quarters defender jumping the curl route, and then we get that post behind it. So going forward, though, as we move into future iterations of Madden and we really get more in-depth with the deep zone coverages, the cover four will definitely get a huge overhaul. We're going to do extremely uh, detailed, uh, intricate details into the cover four concepts and all the different derivatives that you have that go into cover four. Absolutely. Now, I know another question is when you press in cover three or cover four, Will we actually see a press? Is, like, is there a press animation that'll play out? The entire um, Chuck system is something, again, that we want to essentially, for the future, we want to build our Chuck system with the coverage being context-based, if you will. So essentially what I'm saying is we're going to have the coverage, but we want to press within context of the coverage. So and for this year, you know, it's going to be essentially, you know, how it's working traditionally in years past. But going forward, that is something that we definitely want to do because we recognize that there are teams who do play press quarters. You know, there are teams who do show a cover three look and they get up there and they will actually have their corners play a press and bail technique. So those are types of things that we definitely want to get into as we move forward down the line. Another guy I wanted to know is, speaking along that same line, is it essentially a track meet or with the outside guys, he says... Will the outside uh, CBs in their coverage play technique? Well, you know, the thing is we want to make sure that anytime we put anybody in a press uh, scenario that we want them to get to their coverage responsibility so that they can play it correctly. So by and large, we have done a, a, some tuning to make sure that when you do call one of those plays, those guys are able to get back into their coverage responsibilities. Another guy wants to know, and I think I probably know the answer to this question, is cover three free safeties. Will they play sideline to sideline like Earl Thomas? Again, with the deep zone, um, that's one of those areas of the that we're basically, a lot of our focus is underneath stuff. But going forward, the deep zone logic is something that we definitely want to attack. We do recognize that three safeties in the deep middle of the field, you know, they play with range. And, you know, they can help out their opponents on the deep outside thirds, whether you're talking about a cover three concept or even a man-to-man -man cover one situation. So, again, you know, anything we, we're uh, discussing as far as deep zone coverage, you know, in the future, those are going to be areas that we're going to be looking to address really, really hard, whether we're talking about the cover three, cover four press scenarios, different variations of cover four, how the free safety plays his technique in cover three, cover three match, fire zone, cover one, you name it. So those are things in any deep zone situation, we're gonna be uh, fully fully attacking those areas. Another question is, <laughs> it's funny when they ask these questions, like a, it's a vague question, but they wanna know, is, is it, do you have the ability to call a zone that can stop any route in the game? Well, any, you can talk to any NFL coach and they'll tell you there's no such thing as a defense that can stop anything. I mean, when you call a coverage, you made the decision you're willing to take something away, but you're going to give something up. So, you know, to sit here and say that, you know, there's a coverage, the end-all, be-all coverage that stops everything, 
you know, that's just not realistic. Now, true, we have had scenarios in our game before, like the cover two man, which is oh, some considers a little bit overpowered. But even that, we made some strides this year to make that a little bit more realistic in the sense that you just can't sit and cover two men all day and, you know, stop the pass and shut down the run. But to answer the question, you know, no, there's no such thing as a coverage that covers everything. Now, if you're talking about a particular coverage, depending on a particular type of concept, then, you know, we, that's another discussion. How far will the, um, the new zones, as far as technique and teaching people how to use them, what it, you know, what each guy does, will any of that be in the uh, skills trainer? Well, the thing with the zones concepts uh, that we've added this year, some of those things kind of came in a little bit um, after we had initially made our initial plans for what we want to do for 17. So with that being said, we didn't necessarily have a lot of uh, time, if you will, to really focus on the skills trainer aspect of it. We do recognize that that's something going forward that we do need to be able to teach people what the zone assignments are, how they work, what the rules are. But definitely going into seven, uh, 18, excuse me, that is going to be one of our high priorities to make sure that you know we have skills trainer tutorials and drills set up to teach users what the rules are, what the reads are, what the techniques are, so that users can have a better idea, understanding so that when they call a zone, they know what it is that their players are going to be doing. I don't know if, <laughs> again, guys, A-Dub can go forever. Sorry to interrupt. I do have one more um, thought on that. This year with the defensive coverage adjustments, uh, if you go coverage over top, and if, you, that will, and if you have a play with a hook zone in there, other than a middle read, now that will have your zone guys play more of a spot drop technique, but they're going to be playing deeper. And if you go underneath, they're going to be a more of a spot drop technique and they're going to be playing short. So that does give users the ability to kind of sort of know, hey, well, if I don't know all the rules that this particular coverage concept has, well, you do have tools and, ability and uh, features now that can at least put you something that's a little bit more familiar to you. You know that your guys are going to be in a specific area, if, if that makes sense. Now... Like I always tell these guys, you can talk forever and ever and ever the way you break stuff down. So I don't know if this is an easy question or a simple answer, but a guy wants to know how does the game or how will the game define vertical as far as when a guy matches. I guess that's what he's saying. He says a lot of pattern matches zones are based on vertical releases of the wide receiver. How does the game define vertical? Well, we do the same thing. I mean, um any, you can talk to any coach and, you know, defensive coach, and they'll tell you, you know, how you define vertical is up to you. I mean, one team could define vertical as five yards past the line of scrimmage. Another team could define vertical as past linebacker depth. And then in other situations, we can say vertical is 10 yards deep. So it really comes down to what the coverage is, what the concept we're trying to defend. We have a bunch of different ways we actually do it. Uh, but rule of thumb, though, you know, vertical for us, you know, anything going up the field, five yards past line of scrimmage. Only two more questions, guys, because it's, you know, this is already eight minutes, so, you know, and, and A-Dub, you know, plans whenever he gets the opportunity or a chance, he plans to come on to the show because it can be more of a discussion at that point. So I'm just trying to get some of the key questions, so maybe two more, one of which is how will, like, run commit affect what's being done with the zone. So, like, if you call, I'm guessing what they're saying, if you call run commit, how are they going to react to it? Will they just, you know what I mean, will they just stay in run commit or will they still kind of play their zone cover? Well, the run commit feature, it depends on what their assignments are. You know, if they're force defenders or they're involved in the run fit, obviously, you know, we're going to have them playing the run and looking at that. But, you know, it's just like the, um, a lot of the, what we're doing with the gap fits, gap play system. You know, if it's a deep zone assignment, for example, they're not involved in the run fit where they're going to think pass first, but then they'll react to run once the back is across the line of scrimmage. So we've done some a lot of tuning with the um, run commit feature, not only with zones, but also blitzes and, so, and things of that nature as well, especially with the gap play system. All right, I guess the last question, and I know one of the big ones is everybody wants to know what ratings will be the defining factor as far as what's important now with the new zones and coverage. Well, like anything, um, 
right now at this particular point, the zone coverage rating is still an important rating as well as play recognition. So a lot of those things dictate, you know, how fast we recognize what's going on, how fast we break on ball. But, you know, as we've talked off camera, you know, we have future plans for how we want to do the zone coverage ratings. So obviously, you know, those are some things that we're going to work on and figure out. But, you know, we do have some ideas of how we want zone coverage, man coverage ratings, presses, uh, as well as play rec to all play and what they dictate and what they mean. So, um, you know, we definitely got some ideas around how we want the future to be. But for right now, it's essentially, you know, zone coverage, man coverage rating. Uh, you know, we're breaking on the dictates how fast we're breaking on the ball, as well as skill level. Rookie, pro, all pro, all Madden as well. Well, there it is, guys. Um, the only other question, I guess, well, not really a question, but I'll ask Anthony if, you know, if he wants, if there's anything that you want to say to the community, like what they should be looking for, or what, what they can expect with the zone play in general. Well, again, um, one of the things we really wanted to focus on this year was making sure that, you know, our underneath coverage assignments first and foremost, you know, they actually play the rules, the responsibilities, and the techniques, you know, based on the information that we have from the coaches that we were able to talk to. You know, there are different teams, they do different things, but we evaluated everything and we decided, okay, well, this is how we want to go because it fits with what we want to do. And going forward, though, this isn't something that we just want to do for 17 and we're done with it. But like I talked about earlier, I noticed there was a lot of deep zone questions there. I mean, deep zone is something that we're really, really uh, going to be going after uh, extremely hard. And, you know, like I said, uh, we want to make sure we have an entire package. Underneath zones, deep zones, you know, man coverage, all the different tactical and technical techniques, you know, how we carry a guy, where we'll, you know, where we're going to be on his outside shoulder, low shoulder, whatever you call it. We're looking to essentially make sure we get all of those different types of elements into the game. So uh, 17 is a first good start, but, um, you know, going forward, um, you know, we got some great things in store. Absolutely. So what did we learn about this interview, guys? They're focusing on the short zones, getting that foundation, then they're going to move out, address man coverage, all of the stuff that we talk about, different techniques, maybe separating players, the way they play certain things. So I want everyone to understand that this is just the beginning, like we always say, but you're hearing it from him, you know, he's saying it himself. So I guess that's going to do it, guys. Like I said, he plans to come on to the radio show. We'll have a more deeper conversation at that point, but that's it for now. And any last thing you want to say before we sign off? Nah, man, uh, enjoy doing it. Looking forward to coming on. And, um, yeah, if they have um, any questions, you know, they know how to reach you. You know how to reach me, you know. We can make sure that when we come on the radio show, we can um, address any questions they have, especially feel free. Anything you want to know about how we match up against a coverage or how a zone plays against a certain uh, uh, zone defender plays a certain technique, you know, get at us and we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll chop it up, bro. All right, guys, that's it. That's A-Dub. I'm Sim, and we out. Peace. Once again, guys, thanks for coming by. And if you want to interact with me live, head on over to Sim Standard Radio every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, along with Smitty and Azure Fact. The call-in number for the show is down in the description. Now, of course, for more content, go ahead and click the link above. And before you go, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. All right, guys. Until next time, lights out.